So now we're going to talk about the discovery mechanisms. So the first step to make this uh, cluster work is for the manager to discover all the nodes in the cluster. You have multiple mechanisms to do that. The first one will be a distributed storage. So you have an external console cluster, for example. You can also use etcd and Zookeeper. And all the Docker engines are going to register to the distributed store. with basically their IP and port to the remote Docker engines, which is usually 2376 for the secure port. And then the Swarm Manager retrieves the state back from the store and use it to connect to the remote Docker engines. At this point, it will sync up the state, try to validate the Docker engine, which is at the pending state. When it's done and it's validated, you get back all the state with the containers running, the resources available, etc. So you can actually have a functioning cluster. This way, the manager has all the state and you add up and you have a single pool of resource for all the other Docker engines. The, you have other methods to do that. You don't have to use an external distributed store. The added benefit of using the distributed storage is that the Docker engine is actually registering and heartbeating to the store with their TTL. So it's a more dynamic way to make sure that they are all healthy and running. Because if they are not healthy and running, the distributed store is going to notify the manager saying, "Wow, I think the first one here died and you should remove it from your list. Or you should make sure that the containers that are running on top are rebalanced somewhere else, for example, on the second Docker engine. The other basic method are file, static file. You define the IPs and it connects to the IPs. You lose some of the benefits of using the distributed store, but it will also work if you want to try at Swarm and if you want to test it right away. Okay.